When you have osteoporosis or osteopenia, getting the right type of exercise is important for building real strong bone. Now I use jumping to help reverse my osteoporosis, but you should only do jumping if your osteoporosis isn't too bad or if you have osteopenia and if your spine, knees, ankles, and feet are in pretty good condition. Now, if jumping isn't right for you, then stomping might work well, or heel drops and march walking, or even walking while wearing a weighted vest. I have videos on my channel showing you how to do all of these. Still, there are other weight bearing and resistance exercises you can do to build bone that aren't as impactful as jumping. We'll go over several of them in this video. If you want to skip right to the exercises and skip the intro, go below the video to the description box where I'll have the timestamp link. Simply tap or click that blue timestamp number and you'll skip the introduction completely. I'm Glory B and I reversed osteoporosis naturally without the drugs when I was 61 years old. Diet, supplements, and exercise were all involved. I covered so much more of that process and journey in several other videos that are all in one osteoporosis playlist on my channel. Everything I talk about in this video will be linked in the description box below, including products and other videos. For most of the exercises, you'll do a certain number of repetitions and a certain number of sets. Now, a repetition is how many times you'll do that movement in a row. Typically, you do between 10 and 15 repetitions, or reps as they're called. That 10 or 15 reps is called one set. You'll do one set and then either rest or go do a different exercise. Then you'll do another set. In weight training, you'll usually do three sets of each exercise. All of it together, you can call a program. And then you'll do that program two or three times a week. The first exercises use resistance bands, which are short loops. I have this set of three that are all the same size, but are different strengths, light, medium, and heavy. The first exercise is called clamps. Start by using the light band. You'll do this exercise on the floor lying on your side. Put the resistance band just above your knees. Then bend your knees so that your legs are behind you at a 90 degree angle. Support your upper body weight with your hands. Move your top knee up, hold it for one second, then lower your knee. Do 10 to 15 reps. That's one set. Then you can flip over to the other side to lift the other knee. When this starts to feel easy, change the band to the medium weight band. When the clams exercise starts to feel easy to do, change it up to a version of gator bites. Your bottom leg will be bent like it is for clams, but the top leg is straight. Then move the top leg up and down. I'm demonstrating it with my torso raised, but you can also lie fully on your side. Do 10 to 15 reps and do three sets on each side, left and right. The third exercise you'll do with these bands is a squat. Put the band just above your knees. You can hold your hands together like I'm doing here. Then bend your knees, making sure the knees stay behind your toes when you look down. If you're new to squats, bend your knees only a little bit. This exercise is also good to build strength for good balance. Do 10 to 15 reps. The non-loop Therabands are fun to use. These are strips of resistance bands. If you're working with a physical therapist, they'll usually have inventory of a huge roll of these and they can cut a piece to the length you want. The colors correspond to the strength or tension of the band. Typically, you'll see yellow, red, green, and blue bands according to this chart. I like to do an upper arm exercise by stepping on one end of the band and stretching the band behind my shoulder to work the tricep. I'll pump 30 pumps with each arm for one set. For another exercise, I'll wrap the band in each hand and stretch it overhead to work the shoulder muscles. To get another slightly different set of muscles, I'll hold one end of the band in each hand 
and then angle the band behind my back, holding the lower hand still and moving the upper hand in this motion, doing about 30 reps, and then switch hands. For the large loop, I found someone on YouTube who does a much better job showing how to use the large loop. So I'll link to her video in the description box. This triceps exercise requires no equipment. You'll need a firm ottoman or bench. At the gym, I use a weight bench. After sitting, scoot your feet and butt out away from the furniture. Put your heels on the ground, then place your hands at the edge as shown and start pumping your body up and down like you're doing push-ups but backwards. Do 10 to 15 reps. I'm going to go retro on you here by using a thigh master. I have the Suzanne Summers version and it's linked in the description box. This is the original and it is high quality. The exercise is called adduction. You can do these slower if you want to. I suggest doing 25 reps each exercise session until 25 feels too easy. Then go to 50 reps. Once that feels easy, go to 75. And when that feels easy, do 100 reps. Keep the exercise at that point to 100 repetitions. Weight training with dumbbells is a great way to increase the weight you can lift over time. Of course, at your gym, they'll have every weight possible. I have two each of one pound, two pounds, three pounds, five pounds, and 12 pounds. The exercises I'm showing you here are also great for getting rid of the bat wing upper arms by building muscle there. We'll start with the overhead tricep extension. When you're new to this, start with a light weight and work your weight up, increasing the weight. I'm using a 12 pound dumbbell here. Lift the weight overhead and behind your head and keeping your posture stable, lift the weight up and down for 10 to 15 reps for one set. For curls, hold the weights in each hand with your arms straight and your palms facing out in front of you. Then curl the weights up by bending your elbows as shown, bringing the weights toward your shoulders. Then slowly lower the weights back down. Dr. Shostak has said most people forget that we can't have bone loss in our forearms, and this exercise helps to build up that area. Do 10 to 15 reps. I'm holding five pound weights here, but you can start with lighter weights. When the exercise starts to feel too easy, go up to the next higher weight. The single arm dumbbell row is one of my favorites. When working your right arm, put your left knee on a chair, ottoman, or weight bench. Make sure you don't round your back. Hold the weight with your arm long and straight, then use a smooth motion to pull the weight up, bending your elbow, and repeat. Do 10 to 15 reps, then switch to the left arm. I'm using a 12 pound weight here, but I should be using a 20 pound weight. And I have lifted a 25 pound weight with this exercise, but I'm working out at home and I don't have those weights. Start with the size of weight that is comfortable for you to do the single arm row. For the tricep kickback, use a lighter weight than you do for the single arm row. Your legs will be in the same position as they are for the single arm row. Then start with your arm bent, typically at a 90 degree angle. Now I was so focused on the camera getting this shot that I was paying less attention to where my hand was positioned. Then extend your arm back to straighten it. You can also hold the weight there for one second. Do 10 to 15 reps, then switch to the left arm. Those exercises ought to keep you busy for a while. Remember to open the description box and to find everything I talked about, including products and other osteoporosis related videos. You can tap one of the images on the right side of your screen to check out those topics, and I'll see you in the next video.